Hello, so today's little film is about a local film director who I guess was influential in making me change from photography to filmmaking. So this is one for you film buffs. Hello, I'm Hax. I'm a filmmaker and a storyteller. I love to travel, meet fascinating people, go to interesting places and discover amazing things. Join me as we come out of lockdown, as I search for the fascinating, the interesting, and the amazing. So I'm on my way down to Dungeness in Kent, where this director lived on the, uh, the beach, in a beach house. I've always been interested in cinematic experimentation and this particular director experimented in Super 8 which is a, a small film format um, and he was experimenting at a time when the mainstream was only shooting on 35mm. If you drive onto the Dungeness Estate Road towards the two lighthouses you'll very quickly pass this black and yellow cottage. In fact, I wouldn't blame you if you missed it first time. So this little house behind me is where film director, artist and gardener Derek Jarman lived. And in front of that on Dungeness Beach is the sea. Derek Jarman directed lots of films, but four films of note are The Angelic Conversation, The Last of England, The Garden, Jubilee and Caravaggio, which was the debut film for Sean Bean. He also directed films with musicians such as The Pet Shop Boys, Toya Wilcox, The Smiths and Marianne Faithful. The house is called Prospect Cottage. Originally it was a Victorian fisherman's hut. Derek bought it in 1986, renovated it and spent the latter part of his life here. He used it as the main location to his film The Garden in 1990. The cottage and its contents were bought by the Art Fund earlier this year so that they could be preserved together as a museum. As I walked around filming the cottage, I saw a steady stream of people arriving and walking around the garden, obviously fans of the man and his art. Derek was also known for his paintings and his gardening and built this wonderful little garden with sculptures made from beach salvage. Now on the west side of the house there's this sculpture. It's a poem and it's written by the English poet John Donne. Each letter has been sawn out of wood and screwed onto the side of the house. Some of the letters are missing now, but part of the first verse reads Busy old fool, unruly son, why dost thou thus? Through windows and through curtains call on us? Must to thy motions lover's season run? Derek Jarman was also a gay rights activist and its flavour seeps strongly through his art films. In the 90s, HIV and AIDS were big topics and Derek put his head above the pulpit and fought actively at the prejudice and stigmatisation. His paintings were often on the subject of HIV and AIDS, which of course, in his way, was raising awareness of the disease. Derek Jarman died in 1994, and he's buried at the St Clement's Church in Old Romney, and it's not far from here. Come along, let's go and find the church. So the original church here was a Saxon church built way back in the 8th century. But then in the 12th century it was replaced with a Norman style church. The church is about a 15 minute ride from Dungeness. When the Norman church was built, Romney was largely a marsh area and very susceptible to flooding. The foundations were laid on a man-made mound to raise it above the marsh level. There also appears to be a moat around the southwest side. 
Now I believe that Derek Jarman's grave is on the south side of the graveyard, so I'm going to go and have a look. Ah, oh, here it is. What I find fascinating is that all the stones and shells on top of the gravestone. People must come here and actually pay homage to the grave. How interesting. I first became aware of Derek Jarman way back in the early 90s when I saw one of his films. And I was so impressed at the time because of his creativity. He was pushing then a new format, which is Super 8, really. Uh, uh, and it's a film format. But when you consider that the institution of cinema photography then was reliant on 35 mil and even 72 mil, he was breaking boundaries. Yes, some people didn't like his work. Some people thought that it wasn't well made or it was just too out of the box, as it were. But he pushed boundaries. He was brave enough to challenge things and get really creative. And that came through as well when he uh, supported gay, the gay right movement. So he was a very strong person and the legacy he's left makes a statement that has impressed thousands of people. All the people that go to his house and, and uh, the people who come here to the grave and pay homage by paying, putting stones on his gravestone, I find fascinating. And for that reason, in doing the research for this uh, film, I have become even more in admiration of the man. And for me, Derek Jarman will be a mentor in the creativity of making film. Hey, this is a new vlog for me, so if you've enjoyed this episode, give it a like, comment, share it, and if you'd like to see more, give us a follow too. I'm Hax, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.